there's been a few additions uh, to the intelligent flight modes. You still get your regular home lock, course lock, waypoints and the follow me functions where the Phantom will follow the controller. But on top of it, they added two new great features. One of them is called the active track, where it will actually track an object that you highlight on the screen. And the second feature is called tap fly, where you can tap on your tablet or your phone screen and the Phantom will actually start flying in that direction. Before getting to the active track and tap fly function, I'd like to spend some time talking about the obstacle sensing technology. The obstacle sensing only works forward and below the copter, so it is still possible to fly into things backwards or sideways. The Phantom 4 is definitely not crash proof. The user gets to decide whether to allow the drone to fly backwards in the active track mode. This function also only works in the P mode and is available in intelligent flight modes and return to home. Depending on the situation, the drone decides whether to hover, fly over the obstacle or fly around it. When flying in normal mode, it always stops about 5 to 6 feet away from the obstacle. In intelligent flight modes, it will stop and hover in most cases, but will adjust the flight path to go over or around the obstacle if it can find a safe way. I'm not sure how the drone decides what to do, but during my test it seems like it will stop and hover if the obstacle takes up more than half of its field of view. I tried sending the Phantom into bushes, into my car, or even into myself, and through the tree line a few times, and it was always able to detect the obstacle and stop or avoid. However, in most cases it got much closer to the obstacle than I was comfortable with. The user gets to see bars and the numbers representing the distance from the obstacles, which are superimposed over the top of the live feed, similar to a backup camera display in a car. We discovered that the obstacle avoidance gets really confused when flying towards the sun, constantly stopping the drone to avoid these phantom obstacles. No pun intended. This function can be turned off in case it causes problems. The obstacle avoidance is disabled when prop guards are used. When turning the copter on, it should not be facing any nearby object. Otherwise, it confuses these objects for prop guards and disables the obstacle avoidance. I have also gotten sensor error messages when trying to take off on asphalt surface, so if the obstacle sensing system seems to have a problem, try moving the drone to a different surface first. The active track allows the user to track objects by selecting them on the screen. You can simply point the camera on the subject you'd like to be tracked and select it by either pressing on or dragging your finger diagonally across the subject on the screen. The latter method lets you define the area or object to be tracked more precisely. Once the drone locks onto the subject, a green go rectangle displays over the image. Pressing this go button starts the tracking. The drone will follow the subject, maintaining its distance. The tracking always begins with the subject in the middle of the shot, but you can reposition the subject on the screen by holding your finger on the active track crosshair and dragging it to a new position on the screen. You can still control the Phantom in this mode. Uh, the controls work very similar to the point of interest mode, which means pitching forward moves you closer to the subject, pulling back on a stick moves the drone away from it. Rolling right or left will make the drone circle the subject in a corresponding direction. You can also change the altitude with throttle. The rudder yaw and uh, the camera tilt are controlled by the Phantom. DJI claims that the Phantom needs to be at least 9 feet off the ground for the active track to work, but it worked for me at 6.5 feet. The drone will limit the maximum distance from the subject and altitude in order not to lose it. There are a few factors that determine the maximum distance and altitude and whether the object can be successfully tracked altogether. These factors are the size of the subject, the contrast between the subject and its surrounding environment, the light conditions, and presence of any similar objects in the frame. The Phantom is able to track a car from a larger distance than a person. It will have difficulties tracking a person in grey clothes walking over the asphalt parking lot. If your subject gets in front of or behind some object of similar size and color, the drone can get confused and offer begins to track the similar object. In few cases, the drone locked to another object further or closer to it and began to abruptly fly towards or away from the tracked object in an attempt to keep at a constant distance. In one of these cases, it almost hit another phantom, in another one it almost flew itself backwards into a tree. My recommendation is to always keep your finger on the flight mode pause button. The object avoidance works with the active track, but will not protect the drone from flying into things backwards or sideways. The user gets to choose whether to allow the Phantom to fly backwards when tracking, which really depends on the situation and the user's comfort level. 
With the backwards tracking enabled, the Phantom will fly backwards if the subject is moving directly at the Phantom. Once the subject moves about 15 degrees to the right or left, the Phantom will slow down, move to the side, rotate around and get behind the subject. It is possible for the drone to lose the subject if it moves too fast or abruptly changes direction. You can also track stationary objects in a fashion similar to the point of interest mode. Once the tap flight mode is selected, the user can simply tap on the screen to select the direction for the Phantom to fly in. Once selected, a small crosshair turns into a green go button. Pressing this button sends the Phantom in the desired direction. The speed can be set by using a slider on a live preview screen. If the camera can see the horizon, a horizon line will appear on the screen. The Phantom will ascend if the set direction is above this line or descend if it's below. You can change the direction mid-flight by simply tapping on the screen. When descending, it will level off at around 12 feet and will not fly below this altitude in tap fly mode. It will also not let you choose direction that would send a phantom into obstacles or into the ground. The stick input still works. The roll command response is very tame. Pitching forward doesn't really affect the speed, but pulling back will interrupt the tap fly execution. You can change altitude using throttle, and using the rudder or yaw command will change the direction the drone is heading in. This mode can be used for nice camel cam style shots, however only flying forward. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel, check out some of our other videos. You can also visit us at dronevibes.com for more drone news, reviews and how-tos, and also listen to our free Drone Vibes podcast on iTunes and Stitcher.